coming up on Access USI, USI holds its second annual Doggy Dash. The Fall Festival comes to Evansville, and students tell us about their fall break plans. All this and much more here on Access USI. Good evening and welcome to Access USI. I'm Ann Powell. And I'm Rachel Lohorn. Yes. Breaking news, a USI yes. student dies at his Henderson yes. residence Monday. According to the Henderson County Coroner, Ryan S. Johnson committed suicide. The 23-year-old computer science major was in his sophomore year at USI. Johnson also attended the University of Kentucky. Funeral services for Johnson will be held 2 p.m. Friday at the Holy Name of Jesus Catholic Church. Johnson will be buried in St. Louis Cemetery in Henderson. Contributions may be made in memory of his cousin to the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. The candidates for chief government are to visit campus this week. All hosts will hold multiple forums from 1.30 to 2.10 p.m. in the University Center, East Room 2217. Tuesday, former Chief Legal and Ethics Officer Mike Ahern held a forum. Today, Diego Hicks, Vice President of Legal Services and Public Safety at Dixie State University in St. George, Utah spoke. Aaron Trump, a civil rights investigator and at the University of Colorado, will present tomorrow on How Would You Tell USI's Story. Since midterm elections are quickly approaching, it's time to make sure you're registered to vote. There are a few popular misconceptions about voting, so reporter J.J. Jackson discusses these claims and explains the importance of making your voice heard in the upcoming election. The midterms are coming up. <laughs> no, not those midterms that you haven't studied for. But the midterms that happen on November 6th. The deadline to register is this Friday, October 5th, for all eligible voters. There seems to be some misconceptions about the midterms, so let's break it down and debunk some of those. First, the notion that your vote doesn't matter is not true. According to Pew Research, during the 2016 election, only 46.1% of eligible voters ages 18 to 29 years old came out to vote, which, when compared to other age brackets like those 65 years and older, whose turnout was 70.9%, is reasonable to see why your vote didn't count. See, the, young, the thing is, if more young people came out to vote, there would be major legislative change in Washington on issues that many young people feel strongly about, like the imposed tariffs that Trump is enforcing, which are only going to increase to 25% by January 1st. So if you're planning on scoring some deals on Black Friday, my friend, winter is coming. Women's reproductive rights are also at stake, as women are getting more limits on what they can do to their own bodies. Immigration is also going to get more restrictive for anyone who wants to come to the land of opportunities, which includes students who are here on a student visa. This midterm is extremely important, mainly because every seat in the House of Representatives and a third of the seats of the Senate are available, which means that policies could be changed and it would be hard for one party to rule them all. Harvard, which regularly collects survey says that for this upcoming elections, they predict 37% of eligible voters under 30 will actually come out to vote. Although they, they tend to be off by about 7%. So it's actually closer to 30% or one in seven voters. Policies can't be changed if the people don't do their part and vote. The other misconception that I hear is even if I did vote, the Senators will still choose who they want. Again, not true. In states like Indiana, there's a rule called majority takes all, which means that if, for example, during the primary elections, more of the popular vote went to Hillary Clinton, the Sanders would have to vote for her. This misconception, I think, comes from the fact that there are swing states, states like Florida, North Carolina, New Hampshire, who do not have to choose a particular candidate. 
even if they won the popular vote. Which means that even if Hillary Clinton had won the popular vote, the Electoral College can still decide to vote for Donald Trump. I know what you're thinking. Then why even vote? Because those swing state senators were elected by voters who went out and voted. They just happened to choose a president that didn't elect who you wanted. So if this is something that is important to you, go out and register. It does not take long. There's a link in the description on where to register. Then please, go out to vote on November 6th. Your vote does matter and is something that some nations don't even have the chance to do. Reporting for Access USI, I'm JJ Jackson. Cameron Douglas will have a look at your forecast after the break. And we'll move. USI's Archery Club has been sparking substantial interest. Archery is a really growing sport. Expose yourself to a unique experience. This brings something different to USI. The Archery Club offers a safe, fun environment to practice target shooting. We compete in competitions, but we're the only college that has NASP shooting right now. But it's just actually starting to get kicked off. This is the most we've had uh, since it started. Further information to join can be found by visiting USI's website. Come try it out next semester. I'm Cameron Ellis with a look at your Access USI weather forecast. Currently right now for us here in Evansville, we're at partly cloudy skies, 82 degrees right now, and we're going to remain cloudy going into the overnight, down to 74 degrees for an overnight low. Can't rule out a small chance for a small pop-up shower, only 20% chance. I think we remain mainly dry, though, throughout the vast majority of the overnight. The rain chances, though, do increase going into your Thursday. Clouds in the morning, and then the thunderstorms will be rolling in in the afternoon, 80% chance to climb to a high of 82 degrees on your Thursday. And we're not quite done with the rain as we go towards Friday. However, the chance is slightly lower. Still maybe some leftover rain going into the day on Friday. And then we start to begin to dry out somewhat as we go towards the weekend. Still a small chance for some pop-up showers here and there throughout the weekend and into the beginning of next week and we do remain in the 80s throughout the next several days. We're back with more news after the break. Train your body. But also train your mind. Academic skills, training your mind to succeed. USI will be hosting Indiana University at Bossy Field in a charity baseball game. The University of Southern Indiana Baseball will host Indiana University in an exhibition game October 20th at the historic Bossy Field in Evansville. The 4 p.m. exhibition game will benefit the fight against Friedrich's ataxia, a degenerative neuromuscular disorder that affects 1 in 50,000 people in the United States. Tickets for the exhibition game are on sale for $10 for adults and $5 per student and can be purchased at any USI athletic office. Fans can also purchase tickets online at curefa.org baseball. USI Baseball is coming off of its fifth NCAA Division II Championship Series appearance in Midwest Regional Championship. The Screaming Eagles, who were 36-23 and 23 last spring, are under the direction of head coach Tracy Archuleta, who has directed the Eagles to two NCAA Division II National Championships in his 11-year career with the Eagles. We're back with more news after the break. USI ROTC has commissioned many officers who have gone on to serve in the active Army, Army Reserve, and National Guard. 
Many of these officers deployed in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom and Operation Enduring Freedom. The USI ROTC program mirrors the cadet motto of scholar athlete leader. This means that the top priority for cadets enrolled in USI ROTC is a focus on their grades. USI ROTC graduates an outstanding 99% of cadets who receive scholarship contracts. If you're interested in learning more, go to USI's website and search ROTC. USI's annual Doggy Dash took place on Saturday. Here's reporter Jenna Garrett with the story. Last Saturday March the second annual Doggy Dash on the USI campus. Proceeds went to the It Takes a Village No Kill Shelter. Owners were eager to bring out their four-legged friends. Owners could choose between a 5k or a 3k run. People dressed up their dogs in costume for the costume contest that was going on the same day. The winner received free doggy treats. For Access to USI, I am Jana Garrett. Today is the fourth day of the West Side Nut Club Fall Festival. The community is eager to go out and enjoy the fun activities of the event. Reporter Travis Onyet explains the details. This week marks the West Side Nut Club's 97th annual Fall Festival in West Side Evansville on Franklin Street. This event is one of the biggest street festivals in the country, claiming to have over 200,000 attendees every year. It is home to several activities, including carnival rides, amateur talent shows, and food booths. Many of the locals enjoy attending this festival because of the highly social atmosphere. Food. One of the major attractions to this event is the food. With over 100 different food booths, there is plenty of variety to choose from. Chopped chicken and dumplings. I love it. I like chocolate covered grapes. I just got chocolate chocolate. Really cheese steak. Steak, steak, sandwiches. The Fall Fest is taking place all week. And don't forget, there's a big parade Saturday at 4.30. Reporting for Access USI, I'm Travis Onyet. Many students are traveling over fall break this year. Here's what a few of them had to say. I'm looking forward to like hammocking and seeing my dog again. I'm going to stay for, for Friday to go to the Fall Fest and after that I'm going to drive back home. I'm rehearsing for the um, production of Dog in the Manger that is opening uh, this next weekend. We're just putting the show together on the stage, uh, practicing lighting cues and sound cues. Fall break is next Monday and Tuesday. So what are your plans this year for fall break? I'm definitely going to relax and take these two days seriously of some nap time. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I'm going to go back home to Indianapolis, see my family, and finally just get some relaxation time. Maybe sleep in, but we'll see. That's awesome, man. We'll be, we will be back next week, but we will be back October 17th at 730. Have a great night.